All right, yeah, so um, my favorite type of programming is attempting things that I've never done before, which is an extra reason why I shouldn't be a full-time software engineer. Um, because I love the whole process of failing and learning from it, which I think is really important, especially admitting that in front of hundreds of people. Um, so as that artist residency, um, I did a series where, um, of artworks that were called New Romance, and I took uh, a play. It, will, it was a play on Neuromancer by William Gibson, obviously, but um, the reason that I did this project was because I wanted to blend special effects makeup and technology together to better um, visualize what modern cybernetic augmentation could look like. And I did this in the sense that this is digitalized makeup. And when I had the show to show people this, they were like, whoa, that's really cool, but it's also weird, and I don't want to go near it. <laughs> but they also didn't know how I did it, so I got to talk to them about node bots, because this is just running on an Arduino, and it's a simple circuit that I soldered together. And, um, the face is Angelina Fabro if it's making you oddly like familiar with it, but you can't put a finger on it. Um, yeah, so weird art and technology stuff like that. And so that leads me to what we're talking about today. Um, I do visuals under the name MS Paint, Ms. Paint. Um, this was a show that I just played in January at a festival called Magfest. It has 30,000 attendees and like, was surprisingly not as scary as tech conferences. But yeah, um, when I started doing visuals, I was using tools that other people had made already. And I was like, why not make this harder on myself and build my own tools? So I do a lot of these chiptune shows, and I wanted something to work for myself. The thing that I had been working with before was called Lumen. And <clears throat> excuse me, I was using this for a while. It's only available for Mac. What it is, is it's an old school type of video synthesizer that has like patch board stuff that you can factor in. And it was really cool, but um, it was very specific. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So it has a bunch of these patches so that you can pick different kinds of emulations of however they're altering the waves. And you can change it in here and you can hook it up to a MIDI input and save it, and then you can get really wild back here. I don't even know. I read the I read the instructions a little bit, but I gave up because I was like, "That's that's just way too much." And so I was like, "I gotta I gotta do something myself." All right. And then so you're like, "Why? Why would you do that yourself?" Um, so I already was doing visuals, so it seemed like valid time and effort output to you know do it myself and, uh, and I also love challenging myself like I said I love trying things that I've never done before so um, my process going through when I make things is probably similar to like how a lot of other people put things through um, I think of it separately I'm like okay cool so I have this I had an idea of how I wanted to control the input because I wanted to look cooler than just like standing up on stage with a laptop and pushing buttons, I was like, I want to look even cooler. This thing, this is called a MIDI fighter. It is a MIDI input through USB. There's a bunch of buttons. There's a potentiometer inside. There's buttons on the side. And I was like, I would look way cooler up on stage with one of these things than just a laptop. So I have my buttons. And I know I wanted to do something in the browser so that I could build that. And then I was like, all right, so how am I going to do this? And um, that I figured out how to put them together the hard way, essentially. And that was, you know, learning a whole new API. So MIDI, we all know about. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a history of the protocol. And so it's an acronym that stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And it's a way to connect devices that make it, uh, make and control sound. So some people think that like, when I talk about MIDI, I'm gonna be talking about the sound that gets like put out. But, we're just talking about the messages that communicate with it. And so it's a protocol that allows electronic instruments and synthesizers to communicate, meaning a user can control multiple electronic instruments from one synthesizer or a computer. Um, there used to be no coherent way for manufacturers to do this, um, but then in 1981 at the Audio Engineering Society convention in New York, Dave Smith proposed a rough version of a universal digital interface 
that he called the Universal Synthesizer Interfa Interface, or USI. Um, and he was like, gonna go out and meet all these people. And not that many people came, so, you know, he was basically like, here's my project, and I want other people to contribute to it. And everybody was like, mm, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> it's always been a problem, apparently. Um, except somebody that did show up was Ikutaro Kakehashi, who was the founder of Roland at the time. And so the following year, they displayed the fruits of their labor, and it was a demonstration on how MIDI worked and how it was born. And then they won a technical Grammy for it in 2013, which is cool. And uh, yeah, so how does MIDI work specifically? And the most important thing to know about MIDI is that it is based on an idea of message passing between devices, so like pieces of equipment or software. And so you have a keyboard and a synthesizer, and you would like to record a sequence using the sounds that are in the synthesizer. And so you connect them so that they can communicate using that MIDI protocol and start recording. And when that happens, you play notes on the synthesizer, and all of the physical actions are transmitted as MIDI messages to the computer sequencing software, which um, records the messages. And so MIDI messages are brief numeric descriptions of an action, which I'm going to show you with the Web MIDI API when I push the buttons on the computer. So that can be key presses, joystick wiggles, knob turns. They're all encoded, and you, know, you are interpreting what those messages mean. So when you hear the sound that you're making, it's not because of the MIDI. It's because of the messaging that the MIDI is telling the synthesizer to get. Basically, the computer isn't making the, or isn't recording the sound itself. Um, yeah, sorry. Why is my slide deck yelling at me? <laughs> sorry about that. Cool. So the concept of channels is central to how most MIDI messaging works, and that's an independent path over which messages travel to their destination. There's 16 channels per MIDI device, and a track on your sequencer program plays one instrument over a single channel. When dealing with the musical application, MIDI messages in their track find their way to the instrument over that channel. But like I said, we're not dealing with music today. We're dealing with web MIDI. And the MIDI typically enables synthesizers, drum machines, you know, like the music stuff that we talked about. But since it doesn't transmit the audio, if you wanted to make a drum machine using the web MIDI API, you would just use the audio tag. Simple, so you could build your own drum machine if you would like. Um, the other kind of thing that you can use it for is live event controls for lighting and special effects. Really, it's like you can you can do whatever you want. So, the Web MIDI API spec supports MIDI protocol by allowing web apps to enumerate and select input and output devices on the client system and send and receive MIDI messages. And by you're able to utilize non-music applications as well as music ones by promoting low-level access to the MIDI devices on the user systems. And the Web MIDI API gives you an output um, that tells you what kind of device is connected. Uh, and you can do so much with it. It's really, really wild. Um, I've said this a lot. I'm going to skip over it. Use the audio tag if you're wanting to make music. Um, basically. Web MIDI is really enabling a new class of application that can respond to MIDI input using external hardware. So um, use it along with other APIs and from 43 and up, <laughs> and you're, you're ready to go. OK. Cool. So I'm going to show you some demos now of how it works. All right. So also ignore the deprecation. <laughs> messages in the console. <laughs> All right, so where is my screen? All right, so the way that you use MIDI is you request MIDI access. It's built into Chrome, so that's why I'm able to not have anything else in here. Um, yeah, it requests access to the MIDI device, and this is how you can see if the browser supports it. If it doesn't, it'll tell you it does not. And then this is going to output the, the object that I was telling you about before that talks to you about the MIDI inputs and the MIDI outputs. Because not only is a button press, it's the press, the hold, and the release. 
depending on the MIDI device that you have, that outputs all of that messaging. And then this one, also the one bad thing about it is since it's a potentiometer, like every single movement is just gonna keep on giving me messages to you. So let me clear this out and let's open one of these up. All right, so in here you can see that my MIDI device is a MIDI fighter. It should be, unless it's the next one and I'm dead. Oh wait, here we go. So this is a MIDI fighter 3D. It is made by DJ Tech Tools. Uh, this is not a sponsored talk. I just chose their device because I like it. And then when you go in a little bit further, there's a data right here and it gives you an array that identifies a lot of different things it's based off of the spec that you get for the MIDI controller but for for me at least I know that the index zero item in all of the data is contributing to a specific button that is on the device so that's how I'm able to control the work that I'm going to show you um, in a second then it also allows you to do fun things like Say hello. So that's what I mean. Like you don't have to do music. You don't have to do like games. You can even just use it to control simple elements on a web page. All right. Let me get back to Keynote. So what I built, I decided to call Viddy. Um, I originally was going to do like shaders. I was like that would have been really cool, but shaders are hard. <laughs> So um, there's this really awesome library called Pixel Synth made by Donald Hansen, and it's, um, it, it essentially did exactly what I was looking for. So I asked him if I could use it and adapt it to working with a MIDI controller, and he said yes, which is a nice thing to ask. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you how that works. Um, here is another uh, example of what the MIDI fighter is. So it's full color configurable arcade buttons, total motion control, and three axes. It's, it's really cool. Uh, people use it for drumming like this, but I used it for Viddy. I do want to give a warning in case anybody is sensitive to flashing lights. Um, if you have that issue, let me know, and I will give you a second to leave. Does anyone have that issue? They don't? OK, cool. So now I'm going to give you a demo of how Viddy works. All right, so this is it. It is all in the browser. And see that when you use the potentiometer, it affects on one axis the rotation, and on the other one its scale. So it's really great for live music, because even if I'm not familiar with the artist that I'm performing for, I can do it on the fly if I'm on beat, <laughs> at least. And then the other, the other functions that are programmed into, this is an ugly color, so let me switch it to something cuter. I have a randomizer on the side that allows me to keep on going through until I can get a setup that I like. And then from there, I'm also able to change the width of the waves so that it's very, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but it allows for quick changes on the fly, which is really cool. And I'll show you how the code looks for that. It is a mess. But, um, you know, at the beginning, we're requesting that MIDI access, like I was saying. I'm going to make this bigger. Also, it's on GitHub if you want to factor it for me. Or, you know, perform yourself. Command what? P? B? Thank you. See, it's been so long. I don't even write code at my job anymore. V? P? B. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm not going to go over all of the synthesizer code because it's essentially just a lot of RGBA waves. Um, really, MIDI is the star here. And everything in here is commented for uh, Clarity. And yeah, so I have a lot of the output values for the different buttons. 
I have um, an output for controlling the potentiometer and the accelerometer, or the, just the potentiometer, because we needed to round that to a more median number, otherwise it would have been all over the place and very sensitive. So we are controlling it through these helper functions, which is just like averaging out the frequency of the uh, MIDI. Let me this is all of the synthesizer stuff, which is really cool. And down here is what we did with the changes. So the scale and the rotation is getting that input from the potentiometer. And then I'm handling the messaging and honestly, like just randomizing everything. Because <laughs> it, it works. It allows you to like check for the specific buttons for changing the waves. It allows to check for the potentiometer and then um, defining through the scale and rotation. So it's almost all the way there. The only issue is, like, since it is a canvas animation, if I rotate it at a certain point in the browser window, it kind of rotates and you can see the white background, but that is an easy fix. Yeah, tilt logic later. I wrote this two years ago. There's not going to be a later. <laughs> all right, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like when I perform it live. Uh, I picked a song. I'm going to do like a minute or two. Cool. I'm not over. I was so nervous to talk to you today. It has been a while. You would think that that stops happening after, but it does not. <laughs> All right. So let's get out of here. Let me put a song on. And yeah, I hope you... <laughs> future, and the future would be ideally what I've done the past two years if I did anything. Um, but since I haven't, and now I'm working on it again, uh, I would love to have more custom MIDI mapping in it so that people are able to use something other than the MIDI fighter um, so that, you know, people can plug in whatever they want and play around with it. Um, excuse me. I'd also like to add in multiple visual options, so instead of just like Canvas drawing, WebGL shaders, P5, 3GS, maybe just plain CSS animations. You want to do any of that? You can. I'm going to try. And if you are interested in Web MIDI and want to try any of this yourself, there's a bunch of resources that I'll leave up um, if you want to take a picture. It has the Web MIDI API shim, which I use because it's, it's easy. Um, the Web MIDI API hasn't really changed that much. There was the deprecation message in the console because I hadn't updated that code to follow the new spec, but the new spec has like a one-line fix that would get rid of that, so I probably should have just fixed it. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks. <laughs>